Welcome to On His Authority, a channel dedicated to gospel preaching, teaching, and music on the authority of God and His Word. Today, I want to do something a little bit different than normal. We normally have some sort of book study or exegetical preaching. Uh, today, I just want to kind of attend to our hearts. I want to read to you a psalm and just hope it uplifts you. Say a few things and hope it uplifts you. It's been a very tough year here in 2020. There's been so much going on with the coronavirus, the lockdown, mental health is deteriorating, people are depressed. We need God now more than we ever have. I want to look at Psalm 22 and from it I, I want to receive encouragement. Look at the first 18 verses. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest. Yet, you're holy. Oh, you who are enthroned above, upon the praises of Israel, in you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All who see me sneer at me. They separate with the lip, they wag the head saying, commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, because he delights in him. Yet you are he who brought me forth from the womb. You made me trust when upon my mother's breasts. Upon you I was cast from birth. You've been my God from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They've opened wide their mouth at me as a ravening and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It's melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. And you lay me in the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me. A band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look, they stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. This is what they call a messianic psalm. I don't know if, if you're familiar with the crucifixion story, but this describes Christ to a T and the torment that he suffered and what he took upon himself on that cross, poured out for God. Jesus suffers the worst possible suffering. And, and what, what's crazy is this is that it's not just rejection from men. In verse number one, it says the same thing that Jesus cried out from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Not only did Jesus suffer rejection from men, but he was abandoned by God. And you may say that is terrible. And it is because Jesus, upon taking all the sin of the world upon himself, God had to abandon him. Jesus suffered far worse than you did, Christian. Which makes me ask the question, what can we go through that he can identify with? If Jesus can endure this, can we not endure anything? Because Christian, Jesus had to suffer alone 
God had to turn his back on him because of the sin upon him. But when we go through hard times, we have the comforter that is promised for us. Look at verse number 19. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O you, my help, hasten to my assistance. Deliver my soul from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild oxen, you answer me. The psalmist is anguishing, but he's relying on the Lord in times of pain. Christian, I don't know what you're going through, but what I do know is that God's bigger than it. The psalmist here is crying out as if being crucified. And he says, but I will trust the Lord. The Lord will not be far off from me. Meaning no matter what it is that is getting us, the Lord has not removed himself from us. We don't believe theistically. We don't believe that the Lord looks on the earth but doesn't care. The Bible's clear that God loves. Verse number 22. I will tell of your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly will I praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him all you descendants of Israel, for he's not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him for help, he heard. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I shall pay my vows before those who fear him. The afflicted will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek Him will praise the Lord. How do you keep your sanity during times that you can't bear? How does someone keep their mind? How does someone keep a high spirit when the world is seemingly crumbling around them? Praise of the Lord pulls you through hard times. In verse 26, the afflicted will eat and be satisfied. It doesn't necessarily say that they're not going to be afflicted. Another word there will be poor. It doesn't necessarily say that they're going to get rich, that they're going to get pulled through this, but they're going to be fed and they're going to be satisfied because God doesn't abandon his own. He abandoned Christ on the cross so that he doesn't have to abandon you. Let your heart live forever. 27. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of nations will worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, he is, and He rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth will eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust will bow before Him, even He who cannot keep His soul alive. Posterity will serve Him. It will be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They will come and will declare His righteousness to a people who will be born that He has performed it. Every soul will eventually encounter God. So my question is, will we trust Him now and praise Him to the nations? Or will we ignore Him and bow Him when we go to the dust? In 31, it speaks that the Lord is so good to us that we tell our children and then the Lord is so good to them that they tell their children. We don't keep Him a secret. Jesus suffered worse than we ever will. No matter what comes upon us. Whether it be, uh, I don't know, illness, relationship problems, marital strife, divorce, 
uh, a sickness, some sort of, of aloneness, loneliness. Maybe 2020 has caused us to lose our job. Maybe 2020 has caused us to lose our families and our minds. Listen, God is bigger than that. Do you depend on Him? Jesus suffered worse than we ever will. I don't feel any of us are writing poetry saying my bones are out of joint. I don't feel like anyone has robbed us to the point where they're killing us and parting our garments before them and betting on them. Jesus suffered worse than we ever will. But the thing is, is that at the end of the day, things turned out pretty good for Jesus. He's seated at the right hand of God. And also, he may have died, but he conquered it. God may have had to abandon him for a moment, but the veil of the curtain was torn. And now Jesus dwells with God forever. So Christian, I want you to be encouraged through the, the pain of Christ that we are guaranteed to go through pain here on earth, but that's not the end of the story. The end of our story is eternity. And we have a, a mission here. I have to tell my children the goodness of God and explain who He is. I have to preach to all the nations and of God and tell them who He is. And once that's done, I can depart and be with Him. We're going to have suffering, but how we handle that suffering is dependent on us. Let's trust God. Let's dwell with God. The key word is relationship. Let's have a relationship with God, and I promise it changes our mindsets, and it changes our hearts. We may start by saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But we end up saying, I will declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has performed it. Suffering's the catalyst, not the end game. Let's worship him with our lives in spirit and in truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you. 2020 has been incredibly rough. 2020, I feel, is ramping up to get rougher. Lord, cases keep going up. People keep getting sicker. Lord, people keep getting more depressed. And Father, I just ask that you would please guard our hearts and guard our minds. Lord, we, we have a physical illness going around, but nobody talks about the spiritual illness. Lord, keep our bodies healthy. Keep our minds healthy. God, keep our hearts pure. Let us focus on you and dwell on you because only then can we find real joy. I love you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.